I want to talk on a subject, I'm calling it the incredible worth of a woman. And the reason I'm using that phrase is because that's a phrase the Lord spoke to me some years ago in 1995. Paragraph B, I have it written here. <clears throat> it was three o'clock in the morning, and I was suddenly awoken from a sound sleep. It was like the arrow of the Lord struck me. And I was sound asleep, and I woke up, and I prophesied. And I said, the incredible worth of a woman, who can fully understand it? And I, I was startled. I go like, who are you talking to, Mike? And, I mean, I, I'd never thought such a thought. It's the first time, and it's the only time that I ever prophesied to myself. I was the only one there to hear the prophecy. And the Spirit of the Lord was resting on me. I mean, from a dead sleep. The incredible worth of a woman. Who can fully understand? And the Lord was saying, in essence, Mike, I'm talking to you. I want you to understand this. Honoring women is connected to the anointing on the prayer movement. That's in 1 Peter 3, verse 7. We'll get there in a few moments. But the Scripture says... That if a man doesn't honor his wife, his prayers will be hindered. There will be a resistance in his life, in prayer, and connecting with God if he doesn't honor his wife. Now, if the resistance and the hindrance to prayer is related to dishonoring his wife, then the opposite is true as well. That if he honors her because he's agreeing with the Spirit's heart, that's the point, his prayers will be more effective. Now, I can't think of anything more important to a prayer ministry than this reality. That God connects the anointing of prayer in the end time harvest and the glory of the end time church to honoring women. He puts those together because that's how important it is to the Spirit. Satan wants to minimize the value and effectiveness of womanhood and motherhood. He wants to more than minimize it. He wants to completely negate it wherever he can. Some of the examples of how he's attacked and sought to destroy women is to change the, or to establish the image of women as sex objects. And he's been successful in doing that throughout history, in the hearts of many. The prayer movement is linked to honoring women in the homes by the men. You know, the guy, he can go to the prayer meeting and be the, the fiery intercessor and then not honor his wife at home. And I want to assure you, he will be resisted by God and he will have a dull spirit. I mean, he may preach his prayers eloquently, he may put more energy into them, but they won't be more powerful. He may say, well, I just feel like, you know, there's a resistance. In the name of Jesus, I bind it. I have good news for you. You can't bind Jesus in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, I want you to honor that woman in your home. I'm watching. It matters to me. Well, part of establishing the honor of women, number one is to treat them with all purity. It says in 1 Timothy 5, verse 2, Paul said, I want you to treat women with all purity. And that's something that we're committed to in this spiritual family. We don't want jokes, innuendos that promote the stereotypes that are wrong. We don't want sexual innuendos. We don't want, quote, innocent touching that isn't innocent. It has an element of, of sensuality and seduction in it by men. We don't want that. We want an atmosphere where women are treated in all, A-L-L, -L, all purity in this house. 